Okay, so I think we should start already. So if you have question regarding the, the discussion that we are going to conduct, feel free to ask after after the lecture. I will give time for you to ask question, verification, clarification, and probably additional um, ad additional input with regards to our discussion. So as I've stated, we're going to have a recording for, of, of this uh, lecture for the benefit of those of, of your classmates who did not attend the online discussion. So today we're going to be talking about the personal identification techniques and we are just going to talk about those uh, personal identification techniques that has not been discussed yet. As far as I'm uh, aware, we discussed already criminal anthropometry, criminal anthropology, uh, forensic photography, and I think yung tatlo pa lang na yun. The uh, proceedings of this lecture will be included into your prelim exam, so take note of that. Now, the remaining topic that we haven't discussed is we have the iris recognition, although you have an activity with regards to this already. And we have also the graphology, DNA fingerprinting, gait analysis, poroscopy, podoscopy, and radiology. All of this is uh, part of the different techniques that we are going to be talking about under personal identification. Though I believe na napahapyawan na natin ito doon sa course outline natin, we made mention or I, I have given you an idea already what, what are these different techniques. Uh, techniques that they're using so we're going to talk about them one by one let's start with iris recognition so under iris recognition as defined it is an automated method of biometric identification the biometric identification if uh, hindi nyo pa napanood yung discussion natin doon para magkaroon lang tayo ng idea kung ano yung tinatawag nating biometric I have uploaded also a lecture relative to that, so pwede nyong bisitahin later on. Then, uh, as, as we made mention of biometric, para magkaroon na rin tayo ng konting idea, biometric pertains to the identification techniques that uses the uh, different parts of our body that contains uniqueness. So, yung mga part ng katawan natin na unique sa bawat isa, yun yung ginagamit nila as a base of identification and of course to establish identity and isa na nga doon yung fingerprint kasi yan yung pinakapangunahing uh, pinakapangunahing means to establish identity specifically in the field of criminal investigation and uh, as I mentioned iris recognition is also part of that the iris recognition, we go back to this, refers to the automated method of biometric identification that uses mathematical pattern recognition techniques on video images of one or both of the iris of an individual's eye. Now, the iris is just one part of the eye, the, the components of the eye. And it happens that the iris contains a unique pattern to each and every individual. I have noticed that on your assignment, uh, based on your research, na encounter ko din yun, you made mention that the iris itself, the, the pattern, the iris pat, the pattern of your iris, of human iris, is so unique that it is it exceeds the capacity of uh, fingerprint okay so with regards to personal identification mas malaki nga yung kayang i-contribute ng iris recognition dahil kung uniqueness lang ang pinag-uusapan ay higit na mas uh, kakaiba ang patterns in our iris uh, take note of this that identical twin yung yung uh, kambal na uh, halos magkaparehas na sa lahat-lahat don't have the same iris pattern and at the same time with regards to fingerprint i would like to point it out also even identical twins malabo din na magkaroon ang identical twins ng same fingerprint pattern now 
ito ang mas uh, shocking pa with regards to iris recognition because even our own two eyes don't contain the same iris pattern. Imagine that. So talagang very unique ang iris natin. That's why it is a very valuable uh, field in the uh, personal identification study. Okay? So, again, you might ask, you know, bakit kaya yung iris lang? Kasi, as you can see in, in dif different uh, video presentation, and probably you have encountered this already in uh, different movies, na kung saan, ang ini-scan nila to, to have that uh, type of identification system is the whole eye. But actually, it's it's not really the whole eye. As as I mentioned, as I have mentioned, uh, the iris is just one component or part of the human eye. So we have here the different parts of the human eye. Is it only the iris? Kaya ang pwede nating gamitin for the purpose of establishing identity. Can we use the pupil? Can we use the the cornea and other parts of the eye? Actually, there are two parts of the human eye that can be used for identification and that is the iris and then the retina okay however as you can see the retina can be located at the back portion of the eye which means it's not readily visible so when we when we talk about iris recognition we are really referring to the method of identification applicable to uh living individual yung mga buhay so if you're going to look into the retina i don't know how are you going to look into that without probably uh, removing the eye or having uh having a uh tawag doon? having an equipment that has higher capacity than, than than the infrared light that is being used in the iris recognition system so practically it's not uh, uh, it's not yet practical to use the retina as a means of identification so they are using the iris instead kasi nga uh, readily visible siya you can use that through scanning uh, you can identify that and isolate the image of the pattern of the iris through scanning and so on easily okay so uh, that's with regards to that now, the iris, based on the uh, readings that I had conducted, is just one of the nine unique, composi unique composition of our body that can be used for identification. Actually, uh, I will be conducting again a presentation regarding this nine unique composition of our body. I exclusive dito yung, ano, yung, yung fingerprint. Because if we include fingerprint, then that would be 10 unique composition. Ibig sabihin nito, meron pang sham maliban sa fingerprint na pwede natin gamitin basihan for personal identification. And iris is one of them. To mention a few, we have the lip print, yung, yung labi natin, yung print niya, yung ridges or yung line, yung pattern ng lips natin is also unique that can be used for personal identification too. We have also the shape of the ear and the, uh, uh, we have the gait to which we will be talking about later on. So there are a lot of parts in our body that can be used for identification actually and uh, we're happy to be talking about them one by one. Okay? So that is with regards to IRIS. IRIS recognition system was developed by John Dogman. Um, I know that you encountered also this name. And I know that you encountered also the part of the part of the information that they had provided that the some historian believes that the origin of IRIS identification had been used um, probably even farther than, than the date recorded when Jan Dogman finally come up with the system to use the iris as a means of identification. Jan Dogman only is recognized as the first person who composed 
a certain template the basis on how to identify the uh, or how on how to use the iris as a means of identification so he pa he was the one who patented it the uh, siya yung kumbaga gumawa nag-imbento ng proseso kung paano natin magagamit ang iris pattern natin para sa personal identification however sabi nga natin there are a lot of historians that claims that the use of iris as a means of identification can be dates back even further okay now let us talk about uh, graphology pasensya na malakas kasing ulan dito uh, if you encountered already graphology since you have already an activity with regards to this graphology is defined as the analysis of the physical characteristic and patterns of handwriting which attempt to identify the writer I was shocked uh, that this study or this field was included under personal identification because when we talk about graphology it is a pseudoscience false science that talks about handwriting in relation to personality so it does not directly identify or establish the identity of a certain person but rather what is established ano ang inestablish ng handwriting under graphology is the personality and behavior of a certain person so as of today you know, uh, graphology is applied in the field of psychology as part of their uh, study on how to uh, how to understand human behavior and how to predict human behavior now what should be the proper identification techniques that had been included in this is document examination or handwriting analysis because if, if we're going to talk about handwriting analysis that has the aim of course to establish the identity okay graphology on the other hand talks about personality and behavior paano natin malalaman ang behavior and personality ng isang tao gamit ang kanyang sulat kamay okay there are predictors kasi they, they actually they use this in writings of Bonifacio sa mga national hero natin they try to understand the behavior of the the personality and behavior of our national heroes based on their handwriting like for example dr jose rizal you know for a fact that dr jose rizal has a lot of handwritings left behind no marami siyang mga iniwan na mga sulat kamay niya o mga samples ng sulat kamay niya and uh, some of the fanatics of the study of graphology use the concept of graphology to understand the behavior of dr jose rizal they wanted to understand the personality of Dr. Jose Rizal and as well as the other national heroes. This was applied also to Adolf Hitler, if you know him. They tried to understand the personality of Adolf Hitler and they tried to analyze his handwriting in order to do that. So that is just with regards to graphology. Ano? Ang, ang pinapoint out ko lang dito is they should have used other term not graphology because graphology I believe is the study of handwriting in relation to personality and uh, behavior now is this re is there really a possibility to establish identity based on handwriting that's the question that I want to answer pwede ba nating malaman ang katauhan how do you call it uh, can we establish the identity of a certain person based on handwriting? Yes or no? Actually, yes. Nowadays, hindi na tayo masyadong gumagamit kasi na hindi na tayo masyadong nagsusulat because of the uh, mobile devices that we have, because of technology, mas, la mas uh, inclined na tayo sa pagtatype ng mga messages natin. Unlike before that we have so much use of the handwriting no sa sa paaralan sa daily activities natin nagsusulat tayo even though yung yung handwriting natin can still establish our identity think if you agree with me 
can you use or can you identify a certain person na nakilala mo talaga, kakilala mo siya, and then nakikita mo lagi yung kanyang sulat kamay, and then it happens that a certain document was was uh, questioned, either for the purpose of, halimbawa, may gumawa ng death threat sa inyo, sa inyong magkakaklase, in, in a certain classroom, may gumawa ng death threat towards the teacher. And then, can you identify sino ang nagsulat ng death threat na yan by just uh, analyzing or studying the handwriting? And if you have sufficient knowledge with regards to the handwriting of your classmate, 100%, you you can identify that kasi nga basta ganito lang basta sanay ka sa familiar ka doon sa sulat kamay niya whatever uh, it is or whatever medium was used kahit sabihin natin gumamit siya ng ibang ballpen gumamit siya ng ibang papel medyo iniba niya yung kanyang sulat you can still identify and that, there is a field in criminalistic that we call question document examination that is significantly related to what we are talking about. No? Meron tayong field sa criminalistic na ang pinag-aaralan talaga nila is the handwriting of a certain person to establish identity. And of course, this is conducted through comparison. Okay? So that's the concept of graphology. We can identify the identity. We can establish the identity of a certain person through handwriting analysis. Let us, the, the same concept pa rin naman ang ginagawa kasi fingerprint, iris recognition, they are all based on comparison. Kung maraming pagkakaparehas, then the, the conclusion should be is that they are the same or they are produced by the same person or they are owned by the same person. Ganon din naman sa fingerprint. Kung maraming pagkakaparehas sa fingerprint, especially on those unique characteristics that we're talking about, then definitely they are from the same person. The concept of that can be used on handwriting analysis also. Kung maraming pagkakaparehas doon sa sulat, sulat na queen question at sulat na alam natin, then we can conclude that they are written by the same person. So, we can actually establish the identity of the person through handwriting. So, there is no question to that. We can do that. Okay? That is why, kung papansin ninyo nowadays, if, if criminals had, has knowledge with regards to all of this, they will not use their own handwriting in committing crime. Let's say, for example, you want to write a demand letter for, for a kidnap for ransom uh, case. Diba? Gawa ka ng demand letter. Bring me 1 million pesos or else I will kill Mr. Pedro. You will not use your own handwriting for that matter because you know that the handwriting is already an evidence that can be used against you. Especially if uh, mahuli ka and then mapagkumpara yung handwriting na nandoon sa demand letter for that kidnap for ransom and to your handwriting. Okay? So, most criminals who have knowledge with regards to this don't use their own handwriting. Instead, they use uh, machine-produced writing such as typing, typewriter, and we have uh, printed materials. So that's with regards to graphology. Now let's talk about DNA. Okay, so this is very scientific. So DNA refers to the self-replicating material that is present in nearly all living organisms, every individual, even trees, even animals, a lot of, all of living organisms that we have contains DNA and that DNA is um, so unique that can be used to establish the identity of a certain person. Now that is just with regards to DNA. I'm not going to talk much on that because that is very scientific and uh, it is beyond our uh, it is beyond our knowledge. Let us talk about DNA fingerprinting instead. Because when we talk about DNA fingerprinting, dito na papasok yung field natin under criminal investigation. How can we use the DNA, the composition of DNA, in order for us to, to deliver justice or to identify a certain person or to establish the identity of a certain person? The picture here is the guy who started the concept of DNA fingerprinting. 
His name is Ak uh, Alec Jeffries. Now, he defined fin DNA fingerprinting as the process of determining one's individual DNA characteristic. Okay? So, what is interesting under DNA, I think, is how can it be used to, to solve a certain crime, to provide evidence against the guilt of a certain person. Usually, ang DNA kasi, DNA fingerprinting is used either for identification or for paternity matters, di ba? Kung mahilig kayong manood ng mga kung mahilig kayong manood ng mga movies, you have probably seen na uh, ginagamit nila yung DNA natin in order to es uh, establish the identity of a certain person lalo na kung kung hindi natin kilala or may may duda tayo, di ba? We have like for example Jessica Soho, we have Rafi Tulfo uh, things that uh, we're watching on YouTube na karani, uh, laging nababanggit ang DNA when it comes to parental question. Kung sino ang ama, sino ang anak, uh, ganun, mga ganong matters. And of course, it is indeed true that, that uh, DNA fingerprinting can be used to establish that. It, it will help them establish identity malalaman natin kung yung dalawang tao ay re uh, related by blood, biological, through DNA comparison. It does not mean that parehas ang DNA structure ng, ng taong magkapamilya. No. They are just looking into several parts of DNA. May, may na-isolate sila doon at yun yung pinagkukumpara. Kasi DNA is so unique also. No person has the same DNA. But there are some points on the the DNA composition that they're using to establish identity. Okay? That is why, ang, ang DNA din natin, DNA analysis, DNA fingerprinting, is also unique. It exceeds, actually, it exceeds the uh, uniqueness, again, of fingerprinting. Laging nababanatan dito ang fingerprinting, but uh, later on, I will be uh, discussing that why, kung bakit fingerprinting pa rin rely It's very unique that even... Uh, biological brother sisters or yung mga magkakapamilya by blood don't possess the same dna but they can be used to establish whether they are related or not now what are cases kaya pag-usapan na lang natin what are the possible cases wherein dna fingerprinting can be used as an evidence like for example in in a, actually lahat okay Generally, lahat ng crime pwede natin gamitin ng DNA as an evidence. But uh, let us just cite, uh, cite some of them. Like, for example, in rape case. Okay? In rape case. Uh, teka, before we proceed to that, let's talk about what are the what are the parts of the body or what are the evidence that we can collect from the crime scene wherein we can obtain DNA sample. So most likely, yung mga saliva, uh, semen, and blood, those are the things na pwede tayong magkakuha ng DNA samples na pwede natin gamitin sa DNA analysis. And uh, aside from that, of course, kung yung, yung katawan ng tao, that it contains tissues, mga ganun, they can be a good source of DNA. But uh, literally, ito yung mga good source of DNA lamang yung mga like, like uh, body tissues, uh, blood, semen, saliva, and so on. So, if if there are objects found at the crime scene that contains those substance, then definitely the first thing that you should uh, prioritize is to how to uh, collect those substances and bring it to the laboratory for the purpose of DNA examination. Now, halimbawa, uh, in a rape case, di ba? Sa rape case na to, it is usually expected that there will be some seminal fluid na pwedeng maiwan doon sa body parts ni, ni victim. Like for example, sa kanyang katawan, probably nilaway-lawayan or hinalik-halikan, we can obtain DNA from there. Uh, seminal uh, fluid also na pwedeng nilabas ni lalaki towards uh, his victim, ma pwede tayong makakuha ng DNA doon. Okay? What else? Um, 
kung may mga eto eto usually yung nati, nakikita nating ano but then it's not a good source of DNA yung buhok buhok na yan before it's it, it is hard for them to secure or collect DNA from a fallen hair especially kung wala na yung puti niya o yung laman niya doon sa pinaka root niya okay kasi yung kung wala na yon yung dry hair lang na yan medyo mahirapan na silang makakuha ng DNA but i do believe that they have the technology already to to extract a DNA from the hair mismo yung yung itim lang niya pero kung meron yung puti niya it's better kasi nga mas madaling makakuha ng tissue or some substance that can be used for DNA analysis so that's for rape ano sa rape na yan pwedeng makakuha tayo ng mga possible DNA samples from there kasi if we're going to rely on fingerprint although pwede tayong makasecure ng fingerprint from the body na nahawakan ng isang tao but it's very hard so instead if meron namang pwedeng makolek like for example DNA sample then definitely doon tayo mag base kasi nga if we're going to look into the accuracy mas accurate si DNA analysis kumpara kay fingerprinting so Yan, yan sa rape case. What about murder case? Can we use DNA also to establish identity? Yes. What if my blood doon na hindi naman blood ng biktima? So, ibig sabihin may nahalong dugo doon sa crime scene. So, what does that imply? It means that there are other person who are present at the crime scene and that blood is probably came from that person. So, how can we how can we establish his identity? Through DNA analysis. Pwede nating i-analyze yung blood na naiiba doon and alamin natin kung galing sa tao o galing sa hayop and then apparently um, later on we will establish also kung kanino yan galing if we have already the suspects. Okay? Kasi it does not mean na uh, if we have a blood sample already we can already establish the identity of the person. No. Hindi pa. Kasi what is the principle of identification it is done through comparison so if you have a blood sample that is not owned by the victim that is found on the crime scene ano ang hahanapin mo ngayon who is that person that uh, has that same composition same type of blood based on dna analysis so my suspect na you get a blood sample from that suspect then you compare the dna collected from that person from the suspect from the DNA that was collected on the crime scene so that, that's the that's the concept of that so hindi lang yan sa blood what if in a case of robbery you know in a case of robbery um, yung tao na yan nakiinom pa doon sa bahay na ninakawan niya so probably the yung glass na yan has has saliva on it or uh, nakikain so the, probably may saliva kang makokolect doon so that is also a good source of DNA and all of those things if subjected to to examination can be used as a means of identification so it's not only for identification but also for criminal investigation kasi yun yung lagi nating pinag-uusapan what is the significance of this to to personal identification what is the significance of this to to criminal investigation i forgot to to discuss also uh, the significance of iris recognition to both the uh, both criminal investigation and personal identification but i would like to point out also no? in comparison kasi i've seen some of you pointed out that um uh, iris identification or iris recognition is uh, has a higher credibility in terms of personal identification than fingerprint and that is true you know, that is true mas malaki ang chance na pumalpak ang fingerprint identification kumpara sa iris recognition so why is that that uh, they are still using fingerprint instead of iris meron siyang strength and weaknesses in terms of personal identification lamang si iris recognition however pagdating sa usapang criminal investigation medyo nalalamangan naman siya ni fingerprinting bakit kaya of course think of this paano natin ma-record or paano nat paano natin makuha 
ang um, iris paano natin makuha ang iris pattern ng isang tao that is through scanning, through photography kung napicturean yung mata natin ng malapitan then probably they can zoom that out and pwede na lang ma-examine yung iris pattern natin but less likely that uh, a part of your iris will be left into the crime scene di ba? parang unlike fingerprint na mahawakan mo lang yung isang bagay nandun na yung fingerprint mo at pwede nilang makuha yun through uh, development sa iris kasi medyo alanganin lang tayo sa field ng criminal investigation kasi it is very limited unless nakuhanan ng picture yung mata mo ng malapitan then we can use iris identification but uh, I don't know think of a crime na pwedeng mangyari yun I know there are some but then if we're going to compare that to fingerprint then definitely mas rely uh, mas nakakaangat naman ang fingerprint kumpara sa iris recognition in terms of criminal identification okay so uh, that is with regards to DNA fingerprinting DNA fingerprinting is very reliable however um, as of now we are still relying on fingerprint identification kasi nga with regards to the cost yung, yung kabayaran or yung uh, technicalities ng fingerprinting compared to DNA mas madali natin gamitin ang fingerprint because it, it only uh, uses minimal amount of equipments and uh, not much on the trainings da? kailangan din ng training under fingerprinting however if you are going to compare the expertise of DNA analysis examiner DNA examiner to fingerprint examiner then I think mas mahihirapan silang makapag provide ng qualified DNA examiner ah uh, yes DNA examiner okay and then part of this is the yung, yung gagastuhin mo nga if you are going to rely on DNA and then matagal din ang process kasi ng pag paglabas ng DNA results so that is one also of the reason mahal na medyo matagal pa ang process kasi they, they are doing a lot of things in finger uh, in DNA analysis unlike fingerprinting that uh, approximately you just need to develop the latent print and then compare that to the fingerprint collected and uh, you just need a magnifying uh, glass and a ridge counter then you can already establish the identity of a certain person with uh, with that uh, minimal amount of technology okay so that is with regards to that but with regards to accuracy i would go for dna fingerprinting mas malak mas mataas ang accuracy ng dna compared sa fingerprinting okay now let's move to our next topic we have here gate analysis gate analysis refers to the systematic study of animal locomotion more specifically the study of human motion so in in uh, simple terms gait refers to the uh, gait analysis refers to the study of human the way human uh, moves or walk in relation to to his body parts in relation to uh, you know the body parts like the head the shoulder the hips the hands while walking diba? Um, paano maglakad ang isang tao can we use that as a means of identification and why should we use that as a means of identification if we have the other methods case to case basis lang din naman there are instances wherein fingerprint is better used and there are instances wherein iris, uh, iris recognition should be used or DNA should be used and there are also some instances wherein we cannot rely on the other means of identification techniques and the only thing left behind is we have gate analysis you know with the advent uh, modernization that we have with with the different technologies that we have diba marami na tayo mga CCTVs and so on but the problem sometimes is, is that uh, may mga CCTVs tayo na it, it cannot produce a good uh, quality image or quality video in order for us to use that as, as a way of identification may mga CCTVs or video cameras tayo na hindi kaya ang 
uh, pag masyadong madilim, hindi na kayang i-recognize yung mukha ng isang tao, which should be very useful kung nakuha na natin ng video, nakuha na natin ng, uh, yes, nakuha na natin ng video, kaso nga lang ang problema hindi naman malinaw, so hindi natin malalaman kung sino yon. Do you believe that we can still identify that person even if we don't know the face of that person, it's not clear on the video, but by just observing, by just uh, looking into his walking pattern, can we identify that? I don't know if this happens to you. No? Meron na siguro kayong, uh, meron na siguro kayong experience na kung saan may isang tao kayo nakita in the middle of the crowd, maraming tao, then meron kayo nakita, likod lang niya na naglalakad palayo, or palapit, hindi mo nakita yung kanyang mukha but you recognize that person, tinawag mo sa pangalan niya. No? Uh, tell me if you, that happens to you. Now, what is the basis or what is your basis in claiming that that person was the person that you know? Sufficient familiarization. No? Kaya mo or kaya natin basta meron tayong sufficient familiarity na i-identify yung isang tao kahit na one kilometer away pa yan, hindi natin nakikita yung kanyang mukha. Pero, base lang sa paglalakad niya, kaya nating ma-identify yung isang tao. Is that correct? That happens a lot of time. No? Basta meron ka lang sufficient familiarity. Na kaya nating ma-establish yung identity ng isang tao by just the way how his head moves while walking, the way how his shoulder moves while walking, or even the way how his hip, uh, hips moves while walking. So definitely, uh, you are using gait an a gait analysis or gait identification already without you knowing the concept of gait analysis. Now, that is the concept of gait analysis. They are establishing the identity of a certain person in relation or basing on the different movements of that person while walking or in tinatawag natin walking mannerism. Bakit nila ginagamit ito? If if just if they're just basing that uh, on on the manner of walking, is it reliable kaya? Kaya ba talagang ma-identify through through the manner of walking alone? The answer is, yes, kaya niya. And bakit siya ginagamit at bakit siya matatawag nating reliable is because the walking pattern, our walking pattern, is affected by our brain functioning. Okay? Ang nagpapagalaw sa ating katawan are the different uh, activities, uh, different, uh, ano yan, yung produce ng... Uh, signals that being produced by our brain. So, our brain cause our body moves. So, definitely, it is not easy to change how you walk, the manner, as, uh, the manner uh, you walk, because it is dictated by your brain. Unless there are some instances that your brain will be damaged or brain will be uh, your brain functioning will be altered, then that's the time that your manner of walking will be altered also. So, kung sabihin mo, paano kung yung isang tao pekehin niya yung kanyang paglalakad? No? Gumawa siya ng, gumawa siya ng uh, bago niyang walking pattern. Is it possible? It is possible to change your, uh, the manner of, the manner how you walk, your walking mannerism, but it's not possible to uh, stick with it for a long time. Diba? Try mong baguhin yung, uh, yung paglalakad mo. Kaya mo yan. But then later on, babalik na naman yan sa dati mong pamamaraan or dati mong mannerism. Kasi nga, ito ay it's already a part of the brain function. Ito na yung nakasanayan ng utak mo at yan na yung nagiging uh, result niya, yung walking pattern mo. So, a person may change his appearance by cutting his hair or by wearing some uh, clothes that can be used to disguise. No? Pwede siyang gumawit ng iba't ibang disguise, but he cannot easily change his walking pattern. That is why it is used as a means of identification because it is hard to change and then it is very cheap since we are just talking about observation. Okay? There are instances, ito yung ginagawa nila, in case man na we're not talking about sufficient familiarity, paano naman yung mga taong hindi nakakakilala, 
sa kanya at hindi nakakaalam sa walking mannerism niya can they still identify the the person through walking pattern yes example nakuhanan sa CCTV footage yung isang tao na umakyat sa nagnakaw sa isang uh, nagakyat bahay then lumabas however nakatalikod siya hindi kita ng hindi kita yung kanyang mukha so we cannot identify then the police officer had three suspects okay so wala kang ebidensya wala kang DNA walang fingerprint na naiwan walang ebidensya only the the only thing that was left or the only thing that uh, is with you is the video na kung saan naglalakad siya palayo hindi kita ang mukha so you can rely on the gait analysis how would you do that simply if you have three suspect na if you have three suspect in custody ang gawin mo is that make them uh, walk in the same manner as as that uh, taken in in the CCTV footage and then tignan mo yung pagkakaparehas nila kung 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 kanino ba uh, paparehas yung walking pattern na yan i know that uh, if if the suspect is aware that meron nakuha ng video sa kanya na naglalakad siya he he would probably uh, try to alter his walking mannerism and that and that is the thing that you should look upon no kung alam niya kung alam ng suspect mo na merong ganung ebidensya laban sa kanya he might try to alter his walking pattern so what should you do is to observe his walking pattern when he is less suspicious ibig sabihin uh, hindi nung time na ni-require mo siya but rather Alimbawa, paalis na siya sa sa presinto or may, may, may pinakuha ka lang sa kanya, may pinapunta ka lang, may pinapuntahan ka lang sa kanya. That's the time na i-observe mo siya. Nung hindi siya, uh, nung alam niyang walang nag observe sa kanya, then that is the proper time for you to observe his mannerism. Kasi sabi ko nga, consciously kaya nating i-alter yung, man, uh, yung walking pattern natin but... Uh, habang tumatagal, bumabalik at bumabalik pa rin sa dati kasi nga, pag, pag nawala na yung consciousness natin na merong nag-observe sa walking pattern natin, babalik at babalik na naman yan sa dati. And that should be the proper time for you to conduct your observation. Okay? In the field of medicine, they're using uh, gait analysis to establish the uh, different brain uh, problems or brain brain illnesses or illnesses that has something to do with brain no gaya for example ng mga may cerebral uh, ano yun? cerebral palsy yung merong mga may mga epilepsy and so on yung yung basta pag may brain damage sila you will notice that their uh they that their walking pattern is also affected so that is the medical use of that but for the in in, in our field in the field of criminal identification pers uh, in the field of personal identification and criminal investigation that is the relevance of gate analysis okay it is used to establish the identity now let's move to poroscopy Poroscopy is a method of personal identification in which the characteristic of the sweat pores on the friction ridge impression of the palmar and plantar surface are being examined. I know that you already have a, an idea with regards to fingerprinting. So under fingerprinting, they're using the different ridges. Now we have here the image. Etong mga ito, these are the ridges. Okay? And those ridges contains pores, yung mga butas-butas. And under poroscopy, they are using these pores found on the ridges as a means of identification. Okay? So we have here a fingerprint impression. This is usually the fingerprint impression. Na, na ito yung mga na-develop na, na fingerprint. Because uh, when you touch an object, wala namang ganitong lumilitaw unless ma-develop muna siya. So, if you're going to process a fingerprint impression, this is what it looks like. Okay? Now, this is a plain fingerprint uh, impression. And 
kung manotice nyo dito sa picture na ito, we have here some dots into the black one. Yung black one, that is the ridges. No? That's the ridge of, of your fingerprint. Under poroscopy, yun yung kanilang ini-study. So, ito, ito, mas uh, visible. Those little dots in the black one, in the ridge, as, are known as the pores. So, apparent, according to, to the study of poroscopy, these pores, the, their sizes, their location, and their relation to each other is very unique to every individual. Therefore, you can use this as a means of identification. Bakit, uh, bakit pagagamitin? My, my question is, bakit pagagamitin ang poroscopy if you have already the fingerprint? Okay? So, it, it, it uh, seems not rational to use the pores as a means of identification if you have already the fingerprint. That's actually a good question, I, I believe. However, real, uh, in, in, re, in reality, in the crime scene, you will not always collect this form of fingerprint. No? Wala naman sigurong criminal na pasadya nilang ilalapat yung kanilang kamay ng maayos doon sa, sa isang object. You know? Na ganito kabuo yung fingerprint na maiiwan. Maybe in case-to-case -case basis na lamang. Most of the time, fraction lang ng fingerprint ang naiiwan doon sa crime scene because of different factors that may alter the the fingerprint uh, the fingerprint part the latin print left into the crime scene halimbawa yung isang doorknob in the case of of uh, robbery sa mga pagnanakaw sa sa loob ng bahay usually ano yung mga hinahawakan ng tao para mabuksan yung mga doors and so on so probably the doorknob but then later on without you knowing that you are being victimized of of a crime uh, robbery, pwedeng nahawakan mo na o nahawakan na ng ibang tao yung uh, doorknob na yan. So, pwedeng mapatungan na yung mga fingerprint na nandoon o pwedeng mabura na yung mga fingerprint na nandoon. So, ano yung mga naiiwan? Fraction or fragment na lamang. At doon na papasok yung tinatawag nating poroscopy. Halimbawa, doon sa crime scene, ito lang banda na ito, itong maliit lang na banda na ito, ang naiwan. Okay? So, how are we going to identify that then if fraction na lamang ng fingerprint ang naiwan? What can we do is to determine saang part ng fingerprint yung fraction na naiwan na yan para pag nagkaroon ka na ng suspect, yun na lamang yung uh, pwede mong ibigay or pwede mong gamitin as point of comparison para ma-identify mo pa rin yung isang tao. So, that is also the, the benefit of using poroscopy. Kapag hindi na buo yung fingerprint or very minimal na lang yung, yung fingerprint na nakuha mo sa crime scene, hindi ka na makakakuha ng buong fingerprint. So, what, you, uh, what should you do is to rely into poroscopy. No? So, instead na yung buong fingerprint na ang pag-aralan mo, hindi na. Kundi, yung mga part na lamang that contains pores and then identify mo lang kung saan galing para magkaroon tayo ng efficient comparison. So, that's with regards to poroscopy. Okay? Next is podoscopy. Okay? Podoscopy. What is podoscopy? Podoscopy refers to the scientific examination or the study of the soles of the feet. What does it mean? It examines the print in your uh, feet. No? Pag... pag uh, if, if uh, I don't know if you have already observed that there are also prints that can be found onto your uh, feet. Meron din yan. The same as, uh, the same as our fingers, uh, our foot also contains prints, ridges, to, to be uh, exact. Ridges. It has also ridges. So try stepping your foot on onto the floor and then uh, budburan mo ng siguro dinurog na uling, then you brush it off hipan mo, then it will produce or it will show uh, your prints. Okay? So, meron ding mga prints or ridges ang ating paa at yan ay pwede ring gamitin natin for the purpose of 
identification. That's also very unique. It's also very unique. Again, that's one of the unique parts of our body that can be used to establish identity. So with that concept, it means that we can use also the principle of, of, of our feet for the purpose of identification. The podoscopy and poroscopy is uh, both initiated by Edmund Lockhart. No? He is known as the father of poroscopy and podoscopy. Okay? So that's the concept also of podoscopy. In case na uh, yun lang ang evidence na naiwan natin, probably pwedeng mangyari to sa mga instances na kung saan nakapaapa ay yung kriminal and then nakaapak siya ng halimbawa uh, uh, dugo, nakaapak siya ng dirt and uh, nakaapak siya ng malambot na bagay na pwedeng maiwan yung imprints ng kanyang paa doon sa crime scene. So, if, if that's the case, then you, you should utilize that as a basis of identification. And last is we have radiology. Okay? The term radiology refers to the forensic identification science that is associated with all the regions. So, how it is different from the concept of fingerprinting? So, fingerprinting kasi, it only examines the prints that can be found on the terminal palance, doon sa pinakadulong bahagi ng ating daliri, yung tinatawag nating bulb, yung pinakadulong daliri, yung merong kuko. Yung prints na nandun, yun lamang kasi ang ina-examine ni fingerprinting. Sa si study ng radiology, it studies the whole no? prints that can be found onto the arm, uh, onto the hand. So whether that's the uh, palm print, that's the uh, print, the, that's the fingerprint can be found on the tip of your finger or at the uh, second uh, part, a uh, second on the middle phalanx of your finger or at the uh, starting uh, at this one. No? Kahit saan dyan or lahat ng ito is ini-study under radiology so they are not just focus on one part of your hand no one part uh, of your uh, hand prints but they're examining the whole as a basis for criminal in uh, for personal identification okay so that's the concept of radiology and that is the difference between radiology to fingerprint fingerprint is study only the bulb the uh, terminal phalanx of of your finger the fingertip while radiology examines the whole no kasi meron na naman tayong palmistry na tinatawag wherein they're just focusing their examination onto the palm print and they are neglecting the fingerprint so radiology covers all prints that can be found onto the hand of a certain person okay so uh that summarizes our lecture with regards to the different identification techniques. So, do you have any question relevant to what we have discussed so far? Meron ba? Yes? Meron? Wala na? Okay ba? Naintindi <laughs> Naintindihan ba natin lahat? Okay? Okay na tayo? Okay. So, uh, ayun, may 38 na natira. Anyway, we will be uploading this lecture doon sa ano natin, sa YouTube channel natin. So, if you want to go back and uh, listen to it again, uh, it's always there. Okay, so uh, <laughs> uh, when do you want? Huh? Yes, kailan yung exam? I think uh, kailan ang pinaka free ninyo? Five or six, okay. Gabi? (laughs) 
sa bagay. Today is March 1, ano? Mar- uh, anyway, sige. Tignan ko yung schedule ko kasi I'm also going to discuss in other uh, year. So, tignan ko yung schedule ko and I will announce it later. Mamaya, alasin ko kung ano yung kuhan natin, no? But probably, uh, end of this week siguro. Okay. Okay, so, ano, thank you for, thank you for listening. So, yeah, see you again. I will be conducting another lecture again soon. So, that's it for today. Goodbye. Thank you for listening, guys. Bye-bye.